What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got some more revenge stories which I know you're going to love. Not my revenge, but my professor against cheaters. I took the final for an engineering class this morning. Usually, one or two people will go to the bathroom during class. However, for totally unknown reasons, about half of the class needed to use the restroom during the exam. Obviously, a vast majority of them were looking up answers on their phones. This irritated me, but I just stayed focused and barely finished since it was a hard exam. I remember that there was one particular problem that was only barely related to the stuff we went over in class where part a was fairly easy but i had no idea how to do part b i didn't fret over it too much though since that part was only five points out of a hundred well our professor who was on the older side and i would have thought was somewhat ignorant of technology sent us an email just now explaining his diabolical plan to catch cheaters many of the students in this class use Chegg, a website that has answers to lots of homework questions if you're not familiar to be fair i have an account too though i only used it for studying and checking homework solutions. Anyway, he explained that he was tired of people going to the bathroom and looking up answers on their phones, so he made the question I mentioned earlier as a trap. He purposely made part B impossible to solve, and about a month before the final, he got a teaching assistant with a check account to ask the exact question, which was distinctly worded to be unique. He then created his own check account and answered the question with a BS solution that seems right at first glance, but it's actually fundamentally flawed, and it's very unlikely that someone would make the same assumptions and mistakes independently. He said that out of 99 exams, 14 of them fell for the trap and that everyone who had his wrong solution on their exam was given a zero and reported to the university for violating the academic honor pledge they signed on the front. He also sent an email to all the other professors in our department giving them the list of cheaters. Wow. And also OP forgot to mention that he gave full credit on part B of the question to everyone else. Oh, that's even better. So for those people that genuinely had no idea how to solve it because they hadn't been taught it they got full marks and for those that cheated they got nothing that is perfect to be honest though i'm not sure why the professor just didn't collect everyone's phones before the exam started i mean that's what happened in my school but one thing's for sure this method of catching cheaters is way more satisfying moving on to our second story i parked my friend's car in the sun i learned to regret it so i posted this in petty revenge but it was apparently too extreme to be there what my friend does goes way above and beyond the original offense so it's pro revenge done in a really petty way i live in the desert part of the us and during a few months in the summer it is consistently over 110 degrees 43.3 for my europe bros wow that is insane i was borrowing my friend's car for a quick drive because mine was at the shop he asked me to park it in the shade but i could not find a shady spot so i couldn't so when he went to use his car it was burning hot inside he went to me and asked why i did not park it in the shade and i told him i could not find any He told me I would regret it and I thought he was joking. He then offered to pick up my car from the shop. I said yes because I thought he was going to just park it in the sun for a one-time revenge. So I drive a Prius and it uses automatic keys that open it when you go near it. This will be important later. He parks my car in the sun like I expected and gives back my keys. I expect this to be the end, but no. The next day, I went to work and parked in my normal spot in the shade. One of the only shady spots there. After that, I walked into work and proceeded as normal. Later, I went to find my car during lunch, only to see it's three spots over in the sun i thought that was weird because i remember parking in my normal spot but maybe i'm just tired and someone was already there in the spot and i'm having a memory lapse my car being in the sun of course was burning hot this continues to happen for like 10 more days until i finally convince myself i'm not crazy i start thinking who the frick is moving my car no one has a key but me then i remember my friend and what he said he had to be the one doing this i talked to him and he he smiles apparently when he went to pick up my car he got a new automatic key made for 300 dollars and has been moving my car two or three spots over every day into the sun well let's just say it did not stop after that but instead he did it more from my apartment to work he's made it his life's duty that summer to make my driving miserable also if you're reading this name redacted you know who you are f you you idiot additional info for anyone who thinks it's fake because he could not get the key copied that easy 
easily i have my title and registration in the car now i don't do that anymore because people have made me aware about how dumb that is i would never take it out because i would lose it he also had my driver's license so the shop would let him pick up the car i asked him and he said the people who made the key just asked for the registration and title and never even asked for the driver license even though he had it also he has stopped and given me back the key because it's winter now this story is a few months old he said that one summer was enough pain for my sin oh what an incredible story i really like this one because it's not really malicious at all it's just a little bit of genius from this dude it's quite an investment as well right 300 dollars just for a little bit of revenge but i totally rate it well done also if this guy was totally serious about the revenge which clearly he's not it's more of a practical joke he would have probably just stolen the car and parked it i don't know in the next state but you can see that it's only as a joke i really like this story now for our final story think you can steal my stuff and get away with it good luck studying for exams with a broken laptop back in my first year of college i used to live in a residence on campus with three other dudes two of them were cool shout out to b dog and al but the third named david had a nasty habit of taking things that weren't his and mysteriously forgetting that the objects had fallen into his possession some of the items he had stolen that were subsequently found in his room included food snacks notebooks vapes and earbuds albeit cheap ones we'd all complain to our ra but since they were such small items we were told that we should just have a house meeting and talk about it with david to have the problem fixed we had two of those where he claimed it all looks so similar how am i supposed to know which is mine well considering that we all kept our stuff in our rooms this was obviously bs but the ra residence assistant said unless it was something major campus police wouldn't launch an official investigation so we instituted a masking tape policy and marked everything but lo and behold he still continued his petty theft knowing nothing would happen unless i took action i planned my revenge i shelled out around 80 dollars for something similar to this bad boy okay let's have a look at this a usb killer v3 it was a usb device that once plugged into an unsecured usb port fried the computer by building a charge and dispersing it into the port pretty much destroying the cpu among other parts wow now obviously i wasn't going to plant this anywhere but i had to make it seem like this was a tool and not some sort of setup so i'd roped b dog and al in on my plan and installed this software called device lock which protects usb ports from being used without express permission from the user on all of our devices also just in case the butthole tried to plug it into our laptops i even went as far as taping my name to this silicon time bomb with them roped in the last thing to do was wait and see if david had learned his lesson it took all of three days but expectedly david did not learn his lesson i was at the library when this happened but david had decided that this sexy usb would be the perfect addition to his collection of stolen wares so he went in my room and took it big mistake i got a snapchat from b dog that david was going postal and i needed to get back asap i hightailed it and when i got near our residence i could physically hear david swearing and yelling from the hallway when i got inside he was cussing and screaming that he was gonna sue me for purposely trying to damage his laptop by booby trapping a usb admittedly i should have held my composure better but i laughed in that mofo's face i told him that the usb was clearly labeled with my name on my desk in my room and i was using it to test whether my computer ports were secured from devices such as this screaming ensued from him after which our ra showed up he heard that trash vest from down the hall and asked what the heck was happening i stayed quiet to let david attempt to lie his way out of this but holy f the dumb idiot kept to his story after explaining my side the ra said we are both going to campus police as this was pretty serious cue me thinking i just effed up my whole future for a stupid act of revenge when we got there and explained our stories campus police had had none of david's trash they told him that one he cannot sue me since this was not a trap but a security tool that was within my own living space of which he had no right entering to steal from and two he was being relocated to the trashy single residences on the other side of campus and if they caught wind of this again he was getting banned for life from res as well as receiving a non-academic offense a nice little chat with the dean about his misconduct his tone immediately flipped to crying and saying he had all his exam notes on there and it was stressed that was causing him to do this and he had paid to live in the nicer dormitory style housing but they basically told him tough this is your one and final warning the three of us enjoyed the rest of the semester with an extra bedroom for storage space and beer pong which was definitely a win as for david i've only ever seen him in the cafeteria and library on occasion sitting there studying without his laptop yo i didn't even know there were 
USBs that could do this, but that is absolutely fantastic. Like, yeah, it's a little bit harsh, to be fair. All his notes, all his revision was on his laptop, but I don't know. I feel like this was justice. Despite asking him multiple times to please stop stealing your stuff, even when you marked it with your names, he kept doing it. Something had to be done. I'd be interested to see what you guys think about this. Do you think this was unfair or do you think this was okay? I think this was probably just about fine. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash pro revenge. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Now, I did actually recently upload another episode of r slash pro revenge. If you haven't seen it yet, click the thumbnail on screen and I'll see you over there in a second. If you've seen it already, don't worry. I'll see you later today with another fresh upload on the channel.